What's up? So I want to tell a story about my plant medicine journey and how I completely shifted gears, got shook down to my foundation and basically rebuilt my entire mind after my psilocybin experience. And what also inspired me to start uh, joining hands with my partners and my providers so we could do this business together. And so it all really started. I was living in Mexico because COVID hit in California and I wanted to get out. I was living in NorCal and I uh, wanted to find some gyms that were open. So I went out to Mexico and found one right away and um, ended up kind of uh, just being at peace down there. It was really easy, easy life, good environment and uh, good people. And my business was digital and online, so I could just do that thing. And so at the time I was focused on being really successful and really hyper-focused on my goals and basically nothing was gonna get in my way, you know? And I went to answer an Instagram ad and I went through this treatment process where I did the psilocybin and had just a profound breakthrough. It was like I was just ripped apart into this, this expanded openness of beingness or light or, or love. And I recognized this was my power and this was my truth and that like I didn't need this pain, this, 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 this motivation of fear that was inside my mind to live uh, my life. And so I came out of the experience and I recognized how powerful I was and how strong that connection was inside me. And immediately I could not go back to the business that I was currently running. Like it just felt like just picking up you know, sand and it just slipping through your fingers. It was like, it just wasn't going to stick to me. It wasn't really mine. And so I spent a month and I kept serving my clients because I had contracts. Some of them were 12 month contracts. And so I went the distance with all my clients and I um, went and spent a month on the beach and literally shifted my entire lifestyle. I was living in like third story, beautiful hotel, like huge place, big balcony, just gorgeous, swimming pool, everything. And I immediately just like left early, right? I just exited the hotel, like had prepaid for the month and went down and moved to this little town called San Pancho. It was like five minutes away. And shortly thereafter, it was just like, I just wanna be on the beach. And I went down to the beach and started doing yoga with a friend of mine. And I remember laying there and I just like let go of all my ideas about my future, about what reality I should be in, my goals. And I just let go. And I remember I just dropped my head to the side and I was looking out towards the ocean. I just felt this presence come in and this presence was just like holding me. And I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. Like when you let go of your ideas, you get clarity, you get the truth that's inside of you. And it just wanted to hold me and love me. And so I ended up just, my couple friends, they had big teepees and uh, Palapa and all these cool things on the beach set up. And so I just joined with them and literally shifted like my entire life to go live on this beach. And I kept serving my clients. So I'd go into town and I'd go to like the community center and take my meetings and be on the phone and, uh, and do that. And then just escape right back to the beach. And that month of my life was the happiest I'd been in my thirties. I was 37 at the time. And I was just swimming in that presence that was holding me. And it wasn't there just to you know be there. I think it was beautiful that it was there, but it was there to teach me like how to hold myself and how to you know support and love myself. And I think as men, especially, we're not really taught self-love in life. And this loving presence came into me to show me what it's like to be held. And, you know, it didn't just stay there forever. Like I got to experience that beautiful presence. And then like I started feeling compelled to go back out and start building things, start contributing to the world and, uh, and build my business back up again. And so I did that shortly thereafter. But what I really took from that was how much strength I got from that presence, right? That divinity inside of myself. And I committed to just hold that presence for myself, right? And I think a big turning point for me was like looking at my life and you know, I was always been very motivated and had a lot of energy to get things done, but um, it wasn't always because of love, it was because of fear. And for me personally, that's a switch that I have control over, especially now because I've experienced both ends and, um, and you can too by practicing this experience of just literally holding yourself and loving yourself. And when it's most important is when it's not obvious that that's the right thing to do. And what I mean by that is like, after you fail, it's typically, you know, judgment towards yourself, anger, resentment, emotions, projected stuff towards you know, the environment or the world that made you stop or made it difficult or whatever. 
And the truth is that's the ultimate time to love yourself and to hold yourself. And so that you feel supported and so that you have that security that no matter where you go, no matter what happens with your girl, no matter what happens with your job, no matter what happens in the next five minutes in your future, you will always be supported by the one person you can always depend on, which is you. And so I said, I said this story because it's just so impactful. And now I live my life for love. Now I provide from wholeness and I just people call me I just got the sales call and I tell every single person that I love them on the phone when I hop on the phone and I talk their ear off because I want to share the beauty of this experience and like I was on the phone yesterday close to someone and she's like you know she's a corporate exec and she's coming down and she's looking for a reset and I ended up just she closed in like first 15 minutes she was just ready and then I ended up talking to her for like an hour and, and 10 minutes because I'm just excited about the transformation and, and, and sharing these experiences and all the people I've seen go through the exact same process to get incredible results. This is what ignites my passion and just makes my life so much more meaningful. You know, like in my 20s and my 30s, I had like roofing company, I had a real estate company, we flipped like 30 houses. You know, I had all these businesses that were profitable and, and made an impact, right? People need houses, people need roofs, people need, you know, beautiful kitchens and everything else and decks and whatever, whatever, you know, you know, all the things that we, we helped them build. But at the end of the day, I was like, dude, like making people happy, that's pure fulfillment. You know, that's like immediately contributing to just taking people that have in like chronic PTSD, you were treatment resistant depression. I just got done shooting a case study with Brandon, one of our veterans, and he just was, he's one of our many candidates that was considering suicide, came down, and now his own testimony was like, now I feel like I am in absolute control of my life and I can take over the world. And this is his testimony five minutes before um, shooting this, you know, he, he tells me this. And, um, and this is the type of experience that like is just a gift, right? Like these treatments, this process, the efficacy of, of psilocybin and, and just the repetitive, productive transformations that happen for people going through this process. And so uh, I'm blessed to be a part of this. And I wanted to share the story to really anchor in like the importance of self-love and really anchor in the profundity and the power that this medicine has to really turn you into an alignment in your life. And of course you have to be willing, you have to be like ready to go through an experience like that. And you have to be willing to let go and, and really choose what you have to offer. And then that's the greatest gift because when you connect with yourself, then you have unlimited abundance and the ultimate abundance is just you being you. So much love to you, you self love, no matter how old you are, especially if you're a man, capitalize on this, practice this in your life, choose to love yourself, whether that's going to the gym, or that's spending quality time, whether that's going to get a coffee in the morning, whether that's, you know, just having a safe space in your house, and your balcony away from kids, so you can just, you know, unwind and relax and connect with who you are, watching that, you know, TV show that you're, you're fascinated with that nobody else is interested in, do you, okay, I do the weirdest stuff on the planet. Um, I watch like videos of like huge tractor, like those, those things, the big scoops that pick up dirt. I don't even know what they're called. They just pull up my YouTube and I watch those things for hours sometimes. I have no idea why. I think it's because I'm such like a, a, like I put all this stress and pressure on myself to like you be active and do all this stuff in the world. It's like the most meaningless <laughs> thing. I'm watching just dirt get moved by like a big dump truck thing. You know what I'm saying? And so... Uh, whatever makes you laugh, whatever tickles your fancy, like that's what the life uh, is about. And that's about joy and it's about you and it's about you being you. And so capitalize on that, practice that and love yourself. Much love you.